I'm following Doug around because Doug has been our, our uh, research guru on this investigation. Doug, can you tell me what you have found out about the location at uh, the Ninth Street Pub? I found out that there's a lot of history between it, and a lot of it has to do with the th uh, three locations, well, the two locations. I guess I guess we say the three houses in the Bobs. Originally, uh, this was Lillian's house, and it went to a, over here. So this is part of uh, Lillian's original house. See the original foundation on the house. Uh, up front here, you can see where her front porch was. The, the brick stop was originally her front porch of the house. Uh, supermarket, and at one time it was also a uh, salon. Now it's the bar. And these are actually originally there's two separate lots, and uh, that was Lillian's house. This was the bar. Here you can see how the buildings were joined together. Two separate buildings: uh, the supermarket and added on to Lillian's house. So they were all connected to form one location. Well, uh, let's start with the, the property uh, next to the actual bar. Who that was owned by? That's always been owned by the Sonnenbergs. Yes, that has been owned from the Sonnenbergs from the late eighteen hundreds. I found out that uh, I also found out that John, uh, Lily and Mary's sister, passed away. Where at we don't know, but he had he suffered a long illness, illness and lived with his mom the whole time. He died at the age of 35, so whether or not he died in the house, I don't know. Um, so there's three potential people who died in the Sonnenberg house? Possibly four, okay. uh, because we have John, Mary, Lillian, and then the mother. Uh, we're also finding out that three kids did die um, before, before 1910. I, I can't trace back who it was or who died, but it said they had 10 kids and three of them died. So we're trying, we're trying to go back and take a look to see if we can figure out who, who those were. And then who owned uh, the pub location before John? There's actually a lot of, a couple of people who did. Um, there's been a, a, lot of, a couple of different businesses. So um, all the way, I traced it back from the 1896 when the wagon backs had that whole property. Back then, they also owned that house right behind it, so they, they used to own that whole plot. Well, I don't know if they leased it out, if they sold it, I don't know exactly what they did, but it, it was a grocery store, grocery store for most of the time. A few times it became like a plumber, it, uh, and then finally in like 1958 it started, out as a, it became, started being a tavern. It got stood up at one point, I believe it was 1962, and it was actually a salon, too. So, now it's, ever since then, it's been a tavern until 1973, when, of course, Nice Street picked it up and has made it into where it is today. So, this was the grocery store, this was a meat place. And at one point, this was a salon, Because at one point, it was just a store and then a salon. I don't know if no. it was a salon, but No, it was a salon and a tavern, wasn't it? Oh. Tavern. Yes. Okay, yeah, and that was when it was the RNS. Maybe we were Piccolo was here. Yeah, yeah. We've just been doing history on Pacula. Yeah, hey, Pacula. That's it. So you've been reading books, you don't know yeah. how to pronounce it. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. I know McClure was here, and at one point they had a salon, a uh, young man called it. Right, right. And uh, the uh, Roberson, who lived right back behind us here, Jim Roberson, yep. he owned it after Pakula did. Okay, and then there was another one across the street uh, called the... Um, I know this. Green Front? No. What was it called? I can't think of it right now. But uh, they used to, yeah, and they used to uh, call it, on Sunday. They used to call it. They go to church. The ladies go to church. They go drink, and then they box right out in the middle of the street. And they have like three matches set up for every Sunday. And Johnny Windy, who lived right next door over there, uh, used to box. He said he was 42 and three. So every Sunday they would, you know, they'd set up matches and box. He was a tough old bird. That's wild. The birdcage, that's what it was called across the street. The bird cage. 
And you, I mean, that's early 50s, or late 50s, late 50s, early 60s. But there was a tavern on every corner. Yeah, I mean, I remember you know, There was literally a tavern in a horror house. Um, many, many years ago. A uh, little background right off the get-go is Lily and I were really good friends. Uh, when she got older, up in her mid to upper 70s, she got uh, less mobile and I used to change her light bulbs for her, plow her snow, uh, cut her grass, take out her garbage. And when she finally did pass, uh, about a month before she passed, she actually told me that there weren't enough hours in the day to take all of her medications. They had her on so many heart pills and uh, things for diabetes and all that, but God bless her. And uh, we were we were good friends when she passed. I went to her wake, Gary Sonnenberg, her uh, nephew, and I actually had, uh, uh, he spent a lot of time here. So when Lil did pass, I really had no problem with Lil. Now, uh, there were a number of bartenders that I, that I had over the course of the next 10 years, a uh, couple in particular that Lily really didn't like. And uh, it was it was shown through things like you'd go and you'd make sure that you, all your doors and windows are locked and your lights are off, and you'd come back and the light would be back on. Um, you'd hear noises in the room down the basement, uh, especially on Lillian's side. See, there's nothing um, upstairs. I have experienced a number of different things. One of them being uh, that I actually felt a really really cold spot one night. When I was here by myself closing up, I go over to uh, lock the door, which goes to the patio, which was on the side of Lillian's house. And you just get this chill and your hair stands up on the back of your neck like you're in the presence of somebody, but you don't really see them there, you know. And I've had that a number of different times, but there was one night in particular I remember where around Halloween, for some strange reason, and I don't think it was anything to do with the date, but... Um, my friend Nate, who is here quite regular, uh, spoke uh, to me about a, about a week before uh, that he had seen someone moving over to the pool tables. Well, sure enough, about two nights later, uh, I saw movement and a shadow over near the pool tables. And the more I thought about it, the more I thought that it looked like a woman in a dress. And it's exactly the same thing that Nate had seen like 10 days prior because we compared notes. And my, uh, my bartender, Jeff, had spoken about, uh, since he worked for me for seven years, it seemed like every year, uh, mid-October, because that, um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe she passed in October, uh, she would get very active. And uh, I've had uh, a number of different times where I've shut off lights and they were turned back on. Uh, one of the scariest nights I had and one of the convincing nights was I, uh, I was actually downstairs next door, which is in Lillian's house where the furnace is at, and uh, doing laundry uh, and just felt someone's hand on my shoulder. And I turn, you to turn around real quick and no one's there, but you know the feeling and it was like you're, you're, you want to convince yourself that it didn't happen, but I know that it did. But, uh, uh, I've had uh, a lot of different feelings. You don't really get the touch or the feel, but you get the feeling like you're not alone. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's kind of eerie at first, but once you get used to it uh, and realize that it probably is that Lil's with you, it, it doesn't bother you as much. And I, I spent a lot of night, quiet nights here, closing up by myself in the 30 years that I've been here. Yeah. And uh, Lil's definitely here, and uh, I don't have a problem with that, uh, thank God, because uh, she she's uh, she scared the pants off of another other. Um, and, and you guys actually had a pretty good experience uh, with uh, some presence here. And uh, the Ankewitzes are also here, from what I understand. But uh, it's the 9th Street Pub in LaSalle. And uh, Lil's address was 245 9th Street. I'm actually 253. But uh, we built a parking lot in her backyard. And uh, the poor thing died in her closet. And God bless her, she's, she's still with us. And uh, we actually have a picture you should take of, uh, of Lil's uh, relatives on the wall, which we found in her basement, immaculate. 
for some strange ever, you know how things just get right. dirty and dusty. This thing was like somebody had been wiping it off every day for crying out loud. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, Lillian Sonnenberg is definitely with us, and uh, we like having her. 